In the Losers Bracket Finals between Mr. Smog against me, Shadow Facts, the score is 1-1 right now, guys. We have we managed to get two games done yesterday. Now we're gonna continue today. It's gonna be another random mirror on the map Jungle South Farrarat in the best of seven series. And the matchup is gonna be a nice one. It's Isengard against Elves. Mr. Smog is the one who gets to play the Elven faction this time, and me Shadow Facts gets to play the Isengard faction. It's a nice matchup for the Isengard faction, in my opinion. So let's see who is going to be able to win and get ahead in the best of 7 series. At the bottom side of the map we have the blue elven player Mr. Smog and his opponent at the top side of the map is the red Isengard player May Shadow of X guys. Starting with two furnaces obviously, on the other side we're going to have an early barracks incoming after one Malon tree only for Mr. Smog, our world champion 2019, our world champion 2020. In my opinion, the best Rise of the Witch King player since the last two years. Let's see how well he's gonna perform in this series against me, Shadow Facts, who's a really great player in Rise of the Witch King as well. Open wise, Isengard's player might start with the uh, Kreebane because he's actually building up a work pit first for the work packs. Remember, they don't know the matchup, guys. It's an unrevealed random tournament, so unlike in the normal mod of Rise of the Witch King, in which you are able to see the enemy faction even if he picks random in the loading screen, that's not being the case. In this tournament's format, guys. So we're gonna have uh, Lorian Warriors coming first, so he's gonna go for the attack early on. Not even gonna go for the creep potentially. I mean, you can also creep with the Lorian Warriors, the work layer, it's not a big deal. In a 1v1 situation, the work packs, they should be able to win against the Lorian Warriors, you know, with the combination of the whole ability and the creeping. Other than that, you will be losing the fight all the time. The work packs are not the best units for a 1v1 situation. Poor Dwarf don't have Spy, <laughs> uh, he's trying to fool his opponent obviously because, you know, obviously Mr. Smog doesn't know that uh, Meshadow Fax is playing the Isengard faction. And he might go for the Kribe instead, I think that's the best way to do that. Just because, oh he was able to scout now with the builder, but the builder is gonna be sniped down guys. There is no way the builder is going down just like that. And Smog got fooled a little bit, I mean, in which universe you're gonna trust your opponent? Don't trust your opponent. The builder is down in the first minute in the game number three. Okay, he's gonna go now for the creep and the Lorian warriors are going back. They are actually waiting for the pikeman. He's gonna go for a group now and go for that push with the rallying call. Isengard's player didn't choose any power point abilities just yet, but it was a great start regardless. He's gonna get a level two battalion now. Gonna get some money from the creep as well. As he was able to take down the builder, which is huge. So that's gonna limit Mr. Smog quite a bit. He won't be able to expand that much and you know having a builder less is gonna hurt you a lot and eventually at some point he will have to make another builder in order to expand on a huge map like jungles of Fararat. having two builders is very very important okay we have Oruk pet he's gonna go for the crossbow man but they won't be out in the, uh, in time Rebin is gonna be used that's gonna reduce the damage output from these units but there is no defense so you're gonna buy eventually five more seconds time, but the furnaces are getting demolished, you know, in a second still. The work packs, they can't approach these units because the pikemen. But he was luckily able to creep. Level 2, he's gonna have to sustain over time. On the other side, Smok is going now for some defensive units, archers and pikemen. He has already two of them on the field, using the trees, which is the elven passive. Getting stealthed around the trees. Uh, the work packs are dying very, very fast. But I think he was just waiting for the crossbow man to arrive. However, remember he has no war chain ability available, guys. And I think the furnace is not gonna make it out alive. More war packs. I mean, this one is from the beginning, it's level 2. But the furnace is just getting one-shotted, as you can see. There is another one, by the way, as Major of X was able to creep this war clan as well. And Mr. Smog was not able to creep anything just yet. But on the bright side, he was able to take down a lot of units. And also two furnaces from Major of X. And he himself, during all this time, is pretty much untouched. Now building up the stable for some Rewander Lancers. Let's see how effective they are gonna be in this 1v1 situation. I mean, I don't need to say that, but I think you already know. Uh, Sharku is a must-have in this matchup. Even though Mr. Smok is playing a little bit different with the Elven uh, faction, he's not going for the campy, uh, spammy Archer thing. He's actually going for more mobile units. He wanna win the game, not only with having the more Archers in his army, but also you want to dominate the fight in the in the map control and map control in a in a map like this is gonna be very very important that's a bad idea it's gonna be seen by the troll he has to be careful 
Okay, so the Warg Packs, they can't approach these arm this units, by the way. That's not going to be possible, guys. They are forced to retreat. Um, should be using them, going around the side lanes and actually try to snipe some of these Malon trees. I think that should be his goal. We might also see the upgrade later on into the stable level 2 for the Linden Horse Archer units. For now, he's going to go for the creep at the top right side. The troll is down, so that means the Warg Packs, they can finish this. I like the way that me Shadow Fax is focusing more on the map control because early on as Isengard you will run out of resources very fast. Later on you won't have a problem like this anymore because of the devastation, industry, you know, and eventually even the pillage ability from Lourdes is gonna help you out a ton in order to get a lot of resources. But he has to make sure to keep those furnaces alive and he also has to make sure to actually kill some of the Malone trees from Mr. Smog as he is still untouched so far. There is no defense, not enough defense. Crossbowmen are unprotected. The Lancers, they can go for a beautiful trample. Look at this situation. But the pikemen are gonna be there just in time, I'm assuming. He needs to make sure to be around the archers. Oh, that's a bad trample and he lost a couple of Lancers already in a second. The warg packs, they are recovering over time. And Mace of X is going for yet another creep, this time offensively at the bottom side of the map. And I think he should be able to defend himself because Lancers are damaged. Heal is coming in clutch, the crossbowmen are dying very fast to these Lorian archers. Pikemen in the porcupine formation are tanky but they are not able to attack so they will eventually go down as well. They have double barracks and a work pits level 1 up on the field still. I mean on the bright side for me, Shadow of is actually getting a lot of resources from the map by creeping the work layer, troll layer, left and right, which is always nice. And because of that he was also able to collect 7 power points in total, he can now go for the war if he wants to. Smog is actually a little bit behind in, in terms of power points. He has collected five and a half, and five of them he was investing into the heal. So that means the mist is gonna be the lead, guys. I think mist is very, very important in those long extended fights, in those all out fights. You wanna have that to debuff the enemy units, to stealth your own units, which is gonna help you to dominate the fight just much, much harder. Rallying call is available. Um, I think Isengard's player will be forced to go for the Warchan if he wants to have a chance to win this fight. Yes, the debuff is nice, but it's not gonna be enough to negate the effect of Rallying Call completely. That's a big Rallying Call play right there. Rebeen can, can actually be used around this side. Power points are rising and he's actually trying to get 10. And look at this, guys. He was just able to creep another layer at the bottom left side. That means we have no more creeps left on this map. Smok is trying to go for harassment, Mishiro Fax is just trying to creep as much as he possibly can. Alright, the furnace here in the backside is gonna go down next. Kribin is gonna be used to, you know, again, reduce the damage, but it's not gonna be enough. There are just too many Lancers. They are still bursting very hard on these furnaces. And we have now Wormtongue joining the battlefield. Wormtongue is nice because of the debuff with level 3. We can also use him for scouting purposes. We see him more and more often actually lately. That's gonna be the first Malone tree May Shadow Fax is gonna be able to take down. Barak's level 1 by the way, stable level 1 as well. Okay, so Kribane has to be moved to this side. The Rallying Call is gonna be gone very very soon and the fight... He was going for the Waldman of Dunland summon defensively. I mean to defend himself. He was skipping the war chant for that. And I'm not a big fan of this, guys, especially because, you know, Mr. Smog has already so many Lancers on the field. I feel like the Wildman of Zunland is gonna be not that effective. Going for the Warchan and trying to go for the Devastation next would be the best way. He might be able to take down this Malon 3 level 2 in the backside. Smog is not reacting fast enough, he will have to go around this in order to take down the Pikeman. And the Malon 3 level 2 is gonna be taken down. Okay, I mean, Wormtongue is like a meme hero in my opinion. I feel like if you have to invest a little bit of money into a hero, it has to be either Lourdes or Sharku. Sharku is gonna be a great choice in this situation. If you are wondering why, because, you know, Smog has a lot of Lancers on the field and with Shark you can actually keep chasing them down all the time. You will get a lot of pressure on the Lancers, you will get a lot of power points and experience on your Sharku and he will be very very strong. 525 command points collected for the Isengard player, you have 550 command points collected for the Albion player Mr. Smog. He has no heroes on the field just yet, he has a well for the sustain. The Malone tree is going down. And Balmoras, uh, Balmoras Major 11, thank you so much for 3 months now. Appreciate that and welcome back. Balmoras Means a lot to me. Stand, Men of the West. <laughs> okay, uh, beautiful. 
But let's see guys, uh, 6 power points collected, again he can still go for the Vorchan, I'm assuming he is not gonna go for it, I don't even know why, because buffs, you know, in Rise of the Witch King are so impactful in every stage of the game. Lurtz is on the field, there are some pikemen level 2 recovering over time. Um, yeah, I mean the map is looking more red, and actually getting all the creeps done was paying off for me, Shade of X guys. Yeah, I know, I know my internet speed is kind of bad today. I don't even know why, guys. I'm sorry for the for the FPS drops. Um, I can't help it. I'm really sorry. I will check after this game. Maybe we can find a solution to that. Okay, Lancers on the field, a lot of them. Uh, no heroes so far from Mr. Smog, by the way. And still no uh, Sharko on the side from Mishiro Fax. He's going for the clan setting level 2 now for the Wildman Extrovers. Um, he has a lot of units around this side with Lord, so he can actually you know, make something happen potentially. Barak still level 1, he's going for the Barak's uh, number 2 now. Rallying Call was used on these Lancers, that means it won't be available on these units later on. But the level 2 Furnace is going down very fast. And look at the Furnaces from Mishiro Fax. He's building Furnaces next to each other, just to increase his command points. But he's not getting that much money from it actually. He's not going for the Warchant, he's going for the Warchant finally now. But he was already taking so much damage and we have Haldir on the uh, we have Glorfindel on the field actually, guys. Once he's level 3, he's gonna be a monster, we know that. With the Blade of Purity, you can actually 1v1 every single hero in this kind of situations. Level 2 also for Wormtongue. He can also use the Swords now for the Carnage, try to kill um, Glorfindel. I think a Lord's level 2 can kill Glorfindel level 1 easily with the Carnage. He was able to defend himself. And also defend this level 2 furnace, which is huge. It's needed. <clears throat> because Isengard's player will eventually run out of money very soon. I mean, the Warchant was not very effective in this kind of situation. And, oh, that's a nice micro here from Smok. He was almost riding right into the pikeman. I mean, Glorfindel has to be careful, guys. Oh, nice micro from Smok once again. He's almost level 3. Look how much experience he was able to, you know, gain in like a second. The work packs are gonna take care of these uh, units. Lourdes is level 3, level 4 is gonna be the time for Lourdes to shine because he can then cripple down this Glorfindel. Mist is gonna be used kinda defensively. I don't think it was necessary because this fight was kinda over anyway. So, you know, players are making mistake over mistake. I think the Wildman of Dunland summon was a kinda mistake from Major of X. Not going for the War Chant fast enough. Look how fast Glorfindel is. That use escape maybe? Oh, he could have used escape and get away. He's using it now, finally. It's gonna stealth you, by the way. You will be get, you know, you will get invisible. And I of Sauron foresight, at, you know, something like this can reveal you. Okay, the Smalon tree is going down next from the pikemen. Uh, Lorien archers, they don't need to fight against the pikemen in a melee fight. But it looks like they're gonna win anyway. Seven power points collected. I'm curious if he's gonna go for the devastation still. I mean, the Devastation is always nice, it's gonna give you money over money, you know, every time you use it, you get a chunk of money. Now we have finally our level 2 barracks for Mr. Smok, and we all know what it means, boys. We all know what it means. The strongest archers of the game are gonna join the battlefield very soon. <laughs> okay, so Vipman of Dunland is gonna be ready very soon. I think he should be, you know, kind of waiting for the Warchant cooldown and use it all together. Whiteman is good when you use it on top of the enemy archers, but again, you know, Smok has a lot of lancers on the field and they're gonna be nice. The level 2 furnace at the top right side will be spotted by Mr. Smok and will be taken down. Uruk Pits, uh, Clan Setting and Warg Pits level 1. He's not going for the transition into the level 2 Warg Pit just yet. Rate of Purity is on cooldown, right? Yeah, it's on cooldown, so he, I don't know about that. He's losing a lot of lancers. Does he have heal ability available though? No, and he had heal, but he didn't use it. And Glorfindel is going down just like that. That is a Mirkwood. We have a debuff now being active on these Mirkwoods from uh, Wormtongue, guys, level 3. 625 command points available for the Elven player, but he has to be careful because Extrovers are dealing a lot of damage against these uh, debuffed uh, Lorien, uh, I mean, Mirkwood archers. Level 4 now, level 6 is gonna unlock, uh, level 5 is gonna unlock the backstab. Lourdes is level 4, level 5 is gonna unlock um, the leadership, which is gonna be nice. Tainted land into the Wildman of Tunland. That's nice. I like it. There are not many Lancers remaining on the field anymore, and two of them is not. They are not gonna do much. He's going for a trample regardless. He's gonna lose the Lancers in a second. The Mirkwoods are dying, and you get plus 20 for every kill on these Mirkwoods. Why? 
because the Tainted Land from the Isengard faction is gonna give you a pillage ability. As long as you kill units when you are on your own land, you will get money. Not only units, but also structures are gonna give you money, guys. This level 3 Malone tree is gonna go down, and once again, a beautiful, a very beautiful Tainted Land play here from Mayshed of X. Killing a lot of uh, Revendal, I mean, uh, Mirkwood Archers, killing also a couple of Revendal Lancers. He has no more Lancers on the field, if I'm not mistaken, and the map is looking right to me, boys. And all of that without the Sharku. Sharku is not even needed. Major of X is doing a great job in the game number 3, in the first tiebreaker, in the best of 7 series, in the finals of the loser's bracket. I mean, the game isn't over yet, we have still some Mirkwoods remaining on the field. Uh, on the other side, uh, the Alvin player can go if he wants to for the Alvin Woods to cover the Sainted Land from the Alvin player. Mist is gonna be available for the next fight. Uh, level 4 Mormtong, he has debuff ability available, so he can actually... He's in a situation in which you can always debuff the enemy units, you know? You can use Kribane, and if it goes on cooldown, you can use this one. So you can debuff the enemy units 24-7. Okay? Isengard now has still, uh, yeah, he's building now more and more furnaces next to each other, just mainly to increase his command points to full, because he's all about to be command points capped. He has a lot of money, guys, look at the money. He can actually try to save for Saruman, potentially. Saruman is gonna be a nice hero. Once you get him level 2, Fireball is gonna be so effective. Um, I mean, you don't wanna give too much time to the Elven player either, I think you wanna finish him off very, very soon, because he will eventually get more and more of these Mirkwoods on the field. And it's gonna make it kinda hard for you to win those all extended fights. Uh, 10 power points collected, which can be invested into something like Devastation, but you can also skip that. Lourdes, uh, I think, is gonna be hitting level 5 very, very soon. That's gonna unlock the double buff. Lourdes is already level 5, okay, I take it back. Uh, Glorfindel is back on the field, guys. But I think this Malone 3 level 3 is not gonna make it out alive. That's 100 command points he will lose. Mist is gonna be used, though, for defense. Remember, Mist is not only debuffing the enemy units, no, but it's also gonna nullify the enemy leadership. That means Lourdes' leadership is gonna get shut down completely. Rate of purity. Lourdes can also use the carnage with the sword in order, you know, just to make sure to kill this Malone tree, guys. It's a level 3 Malone tree, so you have to take it down. Let's see if he's gonna go for it. It's available, but he's not using it. It's 100 command points the Elven player will be losing once he loses this one. Yeah, he's gonna be losing that one for sure. Look at the command points now from the Alvin player, they are dropping down to 425. Uh, Glorfindel can still move, he is crippled now for a long time. And the last, almost level 2 Malone 3 is gonna be taken down next. I mean, yeah, he has a level 2 barracks, double barracks, but he has not the money to keep making units. He has more production buildings than actual resource buildings on the field. There are still some Malone trees around the bot side. But I think that's not gonna be enough. Isengard is untouched now for a long time as the Elven player Mr. Smog is forced to defend himself all the time. The Watcher is coming in clutch and knocking down Lords as he's making a dance move in the air. <laughs> is level 5 ability available? Yes it is, so it can be used against a hero like Glorfindel. It's gonna poison him, you know, make sure that he's gonna take damage over time. But he's full health, so he should be fine I guess. The Watcher just to save Lords. That's how important Lords actually is. <laughs> I like it. We have still one Mirkwood, two Mirkwoods on the field, guys. He's gonna get some pikemen just to make sure to keep them alive against something like, you know, potential uh, war riders. The Watcher was kinda a waste. I would just let Lourdes die in a situation like this. Um, but he wanted to make sure that Lourdes survives. I think it's fine. He also was able, I guess, to kill uh, Glorfindel, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see Glorfindel on the field anymore. We have some Lancers, they have to go back to heal, but there is no well on the field anymore. Smok is gonna fight until the very end, we know that. The Malone tree is going down, 12 power points almost collected. After the mist, on the other side, Mishiro Fax has Watcher, Tainted Land, Wildman of Dunland, Warchant, Kribane, and 3 power points collected, and full command points available. And look at this, they have finally the anti Elvin faction hero, aka Sharku, joining the battlefield. Dratini52, thank you so much for the following, welcome. He's also going for the Siege, Siege is nice against elves. They have now some level 3 furnaces on the field as well, level 2. Uh, but mainly they are all around to be together, you know? And that's what I'm trying to say all the time. He's not getting a lot of money, uh, even though he has full command points. We have also Saruman. Every hero, okay, every hero from the Isengard faction is now on the field. We have Wormtongue, Lourdes, Sharku, but also the White Wizard himself, Saruman, is also joining the battlefield, guys. 
So the Fellowship of Isengard is here. <laughs> yeah, the Watcher eats Glorfindel alive. True that. Batman of Dunland is gonna be available soon. Tintin Land is available. Warchan is available. So he has all the tools he needs. And there are not many Lancers on the field anymore. So you can eventually use the Whiteman of Dunland on top of the Mirkwoods into the Warchan or Tainted Land and you will be good to go. The Alban player is going to try to go for a 15, which is going to be a nice power spike, but I think it's not going to be enough. He has not enough to defend such an attack. He has not the power to deal with the White Wizard of Isengard. I don't even know if he has the money um, to revive his hero, guys. Okay. He's going to drop down now to 375 command points after losing the Slaughterhouse. I mean, the Smallon tree, not Slaughterhouse. Slaughterhouse is a <laughs> resource building from the Moro faction. Mirik Woods, Whiteman of Tannin are going to be used offensively. Uh, let's see how much damage they will be able to deal. I mean, it's just too much now at this point, you know? There are just too many units to deal with. You have to deal with Wildman coming from this area. You have to deal with the Wildman from the summon. You have to deal with a massive army, including all the Isengard heroes. And a sh Ooh, beautiful Wizard Plus. He got a lot of money there, guys. And I think GG is going to be called very soon. Very well played here from the Isengard's player, May Shadow Fax. Definitely well deserved the victory. The start of the game was kinda a little bit bad for Mr. Smog. He was trying to scout with the builder. The builder got sniped down from the war packs. And, you know, having one builder less than your opponent is gonna make you kinda, you know, you're gonna start with like a 0 1 situation. But on top of that, May Shadow Fax was able to creep. We have a ram on the field, guys, ramming the fortress now from Smoky. The Vestation is gonna be used, just why not, for the memes, the game is all about to be over anyway. Well played, well deserved, and May Shadow Fax will actually have an advantage now in the best of 7 series by, you know, increasing his lead to 2-1. Very well played from both the players. Interesting gameplay from May Shadow Fax definitely by creeping 24-7. Yes, the Eagle allies now, can Eagle save Middle Earth once again? I mean, extra wars are gonna deal decent amount of damage. Glorfindel is gonna go down first. There are no more units. Look at this command points from Mr. Smog. He has 0 out of 325 command points, guys. As the summoned units are not gonna count towards your command point limit. And the game is over. Mr. Smog has been defeated without saying GG, guys. And he's shocked. I am shocked. You are shocked. But very well played here from Mayshed of X. Well deserved the victory. Game 3 finals. Loser brackets. And we're gonna jump right into the game number 4. The game number 4 is all about to begin, guys. It's gonna be yet another random mirror, this time on the map Sorrow Isle. Uh, the pirate map in the in the map pool for the for the Christmas tournament. Christmas tournament sounds kinda um, like a meme, but it is not a meme, guys. Uh, we were not able to finish the tournament in, you know, by the time we had to or we wanted to. That's why we continue now also in January 2021. But it is how it is, guys. We have the Mordo mirror now for the first time in uh, this in this uh, series between those two players, we have at the bottom side the blue model player Mr. Smog against the red model player May Shadow Fax at the top side. May Shadow Fax is a main model player. Eye of Sauron is gonna be used and I get a phone call. <laughs> Wait a second. One second, guys. Okay, guys, um, I think they want to make a remake of this one. They might go for a remake because I feel like Mr. Smoke has some problems. But if it's too late, you just leave the game, you know? Don't wait for me to leave the game. I spy with I and I, uh, it sometimes doesn't work. We can't have perfect game, <laughs> but he's gonna leave. That's fine, that's fine, we're gonna make a remake. Uh, it is how it is. Um, you know, I'm fine with that, especially in a Mortal Mirror, I'm not mad <laughs> if this game doesn't count. And we're gonna continue after figuring out what to do. Alright guys, we're gonna continue with the game number 4 on the beautiful map Sorrow while after having some technical difficulties with Mr. Smog. Hopefully that's not gonna happen anymore, it's gonna be another random mirror. I'm fine to not see a Mordor mirror again. It's gonna be Man of the West against Dwarves, so it's gonna be a difficult matchup for the Man of the West player, because if you don't know that you're against Dwarves, it's very very hard to deal with. So let's see. 
Smoke will have now the chance to make the score even. At the top side of the at the bottom side of the map, we have the red man of the west player main shadow fax against the blue dwarven player Mr. Smoke at the top side. He's gonna go with uh, two mine shafts, obviously. We're gonna have a farm start into a potential you know offensive barracks, but let's see. I mean that's a random unrevealed tournament, so you don't know the faction. It can backfire big time. Rally Cole has been chosen from the Man of the West player, but also from the Dwarven player Mr. Smug. Two mineshafts into the Hall of Warriors is gonna be the build order from the Dwarven player. On the other side we have a farm. The build is moving forward. He might go for a scout, but I'm assuming he's gonna go for the barracks around this side. He might also, you know, recruit some pikemen right after in order to creep the troll layer, Which is gonna be nice. But that leaves this entire area unprotected. Okay, so we have Rallying Call um, start from buff, so you know, you don't have any other choices with these two factions, the other choices would be either heal or rebuild, but they are not the best choices to begin the game with. You're gonna have Pikeman start, and actually that's a nice situation because I think um, Smokey is gonna go for the creep as well, so we might have a 1v1 situation around this side, but keep in mind, having a barracks around this area, He's gonna, oh, he's gonna go for the soldiers actually, okay? Soldiers are gonna be nice against the pikemen. They are a great counter to these units. The build is moving forward for our offensive tunnel. That's how this matchup works with the mobile factions like with dwarves and goblins. You wanna make sure that you build some tunnels or mineshafts in this case offensive. Lead to, you know, towers to the side of your opponent. You can this way, you know, use them for harassment 24-7. He's gonna hide this uh, mineshaft around this side, which is nice. He's creeping the trolley at the top left side though. Builder from uh, Major of X will be finally able to see the Dwarven Pikeman. Might go for a hero move, but what the hero move would be in a situation like this is use your Builder and try to steal the money. <laughs> it would be a nice situation. Guardians are coming up next. They might be used for you know to deal with the soldiers first. Uh, he might also use them to get them out from this mineshaft and go for the attack. Okay, um, the Builder is not trying to steal the money, unfortunately. I would love to see this. Smok was able to, uh, to secure a creep. He's waiting for one more Guardian now. The builders are able to see each other now. Major of X expects there is a Mineshaft. He should be reacting to that. But again, the Varax is around this side. So there is no defense for these two farms, guys. He will just get deleted the second uh, Mr. Smok is going to be able to see them. He will also be capturing this signal fire, just why not, to get some vision control. On this map, what makes this map so special is this ship ride. You can capture this one and go for transport ships and go for a sneaky attack. And even when you purchase the signal fire, if you go all the way around this, he won't be able to see you. He's gonna commit on this uh, mineshaft in the backside. Smog has some units inside the mineshaft, so he might be getting them out to protect the mineshaft, that's gonna be also the case. The farm here is gonna go down next from, you know, by taken down by these guardians, guys. Rallying Call is still unused for both the players. He's not using it on these soldiers just yet. He won't be able to take it down. He might be able to take it down with the second unit, though. Getting more and more units. No, uh, he's going for another barracks around this side. Okay, now it makes sense. But I think it's just too little and too late. He has units all around the place, but yet he was not able to achieve anything with these units. He's taking way too much damage from the fortress. The Forge Works is coming up now for Mr. Smug, uh, for Battle Wagons, potentially for the leadership part, for the double buff on these Guardians. They're gonna hit like an absolute truck with the double buff. And look at this, guys. The farms are getting... He, he has not enough units to react to both the plays. And Guardians are, you know, dealing quite a lot of damage to the buildings. And both the farms are gonna be taken down. He will be finally able to take down one of the mine shafts in the middle of the map, but he has to make sure to take down this one as well. This one is gonna be unprotected. Oh, he actually was able to take down this mine shaft here, which is nice. I like it. This one is also very, very low, so he might be able to finish it off later on. Uh, he was using the charge attack on these guardians. Rallying call is still available, and not a single player was using the rallying call just yet. Okay. Missed the third game, which factions? It was Elves against Isengard. Look. Um, now we might see a Rallying Call. What would make sense in a situation like this is definitely the Siege Am upgrades on these Guardians, you know? 
Because with three, I think with three guardians, with siege hammers, you can actually burst down the fortress in no time. Okay, uh, that's a good fight for the men of the west play, I'm assuming. Because the soldiers are quite tanky, with the whole crown stands in shield wall formation, however, he's not using the shield wall formation, I think it's good when you use it. Because yes, you lose 20% damage, but you get 33% armor. So it's actually, you know, quick math, it's better. So you're gonna become tankier and you don't lose that much damage as well. And I actually take it back, I mean, Smoke is dominating this fight, guys, big time. Guardians are so strong. I mean, they are also a little bit more expensive than those soldiers. He will be able to take down this mineshaft. The uh, battle wagon has to be very careful. I hope he's not gonna run straight into the pikemen. Might use the oil bottle though, around this side. Just why not? He's gonna use it. That's gonna cause the enemy units to take damage over time as long as they stay around this side. The fight continues. Rallying call is gone now for both the players. Heal was used to, you know, keep those units healthy. And that is a level 2 battalion. He's gonna use the charge attack to, you know, maintain the bonus of the rallying call. Which is the buff. 50% more damage and armor is gonna be unlocked for these units. And the Varax from the Man of the West player is tanky, but it is not tanky enough. By the way, the tankiest Varax in the game is definitely the Hall of Warriors with level 1. He has 4000 HP. This game is looking really nice for the Dwarven player, Mr. Smog, guys. He has a Man of the West player, 7 power points collected after the Rallying Call. He has 350 command points only. He's gonna lose the Varax as well. The Varax around this side is still remaining on the field. On the other side, we have 400 command points available for Mr. Smug. He has quite a lot of units on the fields now. And he has also now battle wagons to support the army with some more, uh, you know, sustain or leadership. Which is a great utility for the army to have a battle wagon on your side. That's gonna, you know, kind of force Major of X to make multiple pikemen. But even when you make pikemen, the battle wagon can always stay behind. Use oil barrel, give leadership, give to sustain with the heal. It's a great unit you can use in different kind of situations. Yeah, that's why I like the battle wagons quite a lot from the Dwarven faction. They got nerfed big time, their damage output got nerfed big time, especially the Man of the Hill upgrade. Uh, it was very very strong before, in the you know in the patch before. Now in the version 8.4, it's not that strong anymore, especially against pikemen. You will need a lot of time in order to take them down with the Man of the Hill on your battle wagons. The map is looking more and more blue. Uh, Shadow Fax, Major of X is, you know, still fighting for the map control, trying to achieve something. But he has no defense around this side at all. Like, he has nothing to defend. That means he will lose the farms over and over again. The barracks in a, in a really bad situation. Which is, I mean, it's like a double-edged sword. This can work pretty nice because he keeps up the pressure all the time. That's the bright side of that. But on the other side, his side of the map is completely unprotected. Look at this, guys. He's not able to build any farms and keep them longer than 20 seconds under this control. 400 command points for Major of X, and we have 450 command points for Mr. Smog. But look how much of his command points they're actually using, guys. 378 against 248. The soldiers are gonna be able to take down this mineshaft eventually. He should be using the aggressive stance, I think, to maximize the DPS. Uh, he has this one under, under his control as well. He was building it another offensive barracks at the top left side. This one has to be cancelled, by the way. He has to cancel that, otherwise he's gonna lose the money. He was cancelling it, which is smart. Then you cancel that, you get money back. You can't take down the Hall of Warriors like this. You will need a lot of time. If he goes for the Siege Hammers, he can literally end the game, guys. Like, he can literally, I mean, not end the game, but he can easily take down the Fortress. Builder from Major of X is going down next. All, he, all it takes are like three guardians with siege hammers, and the fortress is gonna be taken down in a second. And Major of X has nothing to defend against such a reckless seed. Eight power points collected, heal is available, rallying call is available. On the other side, Major of X went actually for the arrow volley. Um, that's something I don't like to see that much just because. Um, Arrow Volley has an animation, you can see it's coming, and you have time to react. You can always, you know, get away from the Arrow Volley. The only time I like Arrow Volley is when you have something to stop the enemy unit's movement. Like Horn of Gondor, for example. You stun them, you use Arrow Volley, it's a guaranteed hit on the enemy units, and it's gonna one-shot them. If not one-shot them, but it's gonna, you know, burn them. Because unlike the, unlike the long shot from Rangers, the Arrow Volley is also leaving like a fire on the ground. 
which is gonna, you know, deal damage over time. That's why it's so important to stun the enemy units first. And experienced players like Mr. Smog, he will see the animation coming and he will have the time he needs to get away. So I'm assuming he's gonna go for the rallying call actually, but he was using it, he was using it around this side. We have even an offensive stable here now, that means he has no rallying call on these units. But he's using charge attack with one of them. Does he have Siege Hammer's purchase? No, he doesn't. But I think he doesn't even need it because he has no rebuild ability available. Longshot is incoming. I don't know if Mr. Smock is paying attention or not. He's not using Longshot around this side, though. What's happening? But he was using the Longshot ad. I can't tell you. Around this side to kill the enemy units. He should be using the Longshot definitely to save the fortress. <laughs> uh, yeah, he doesn't have the power points for rebuild. And I think the fortress is Connor's guys. Just like that, even without the Siege Hammers. Offensive statue around this side, just why not from Smog, just to make sure that they have leadership as well, I like it. <laughs> That's so nice, you know, use the builder, build a statue right in front of the fortress of your opponent, just to have the extra damage you need in order to win the game with the help of the Hobbits, of course, from the from the Shire. We have Frodo, Samwise Gamgee, you know, Peregrine took and also Mary Poppins in the Hobbit army. It's just enough to finish off the fortress. And I'm I'm actually asking myself why he was not using the arrow volley to defend the fortress. I don't know. Um, now it's gonna be, you know, hard to nearly impossible to win this game because no fortress means you can't use your power point abilities anymore. And in order to rebuild the fortress, you will have to collect four and a half thousand resources. Which is very, very hard, especially if you are short on command points like Major Effects. He will need around 10 minutes to have the money he needs. But he also has to keep making units, which is very, very important. Killing the Fortress at any stage of the game is gonna give you a huge advantage. I think it's the advantage you're gonna get from, you know, killing the opponent's Fortress is gonna be even bigger in the late game than more than two, three power point abilities are unlocked from the spellbook. And yeah, he's gonna try to fight back for this area but again no riding call can be used no arrow volley can be used and no potential rebuild can be used either so a terrible situation for the man of the west player for sure but we know major of x is gonna fight until the very end and hope for some shenanigans at this point of the game it's not gonna be enough if major of x performs really nice no i think he also has to rely on the mistakes from mr smog mr smog has to make a big mistake in order to give a chance to Major of X to come back from this situation. And I think that's not gonna happen. Mr. Smog knows how to snowball his lead. He knows how to close the games he's, when he's ahead. And yeah, that should be the game number four, guys. And we're gonna see the, the second tiebreaker in the best of seven series right after this one. And we are also getting, you know, obviously in the best of seven series, we're gonna see every time a different map. So far we are able to see the maps Eastfold, Jungles of Farharad, Holy Edit, and now also the Sorowile. We have still a couple of maps left as Ethelmore's Edit, Erin Lear Edit, Plains of Linden, and Forts of Anduin. They are still unplayed so far in this series, so you might get to see one of these four in the upcoming match. Alperan, thank you so much. Alright, so he is fighting until the end. We have now uh, King Brand joining the battlefield. Uh, I would like to see more um, Gloin. Gloin is a great hero when you want to siege, when you want to destroy the open end buildings, especially once you get to level 4. With the Shake Foundation, it deals a massive damage to one structure. He was able to kill the barracks and the stable. That means the only thing that keeps Major of X alive is the barracks around this side. He has no more barracks, <clears throat> no more barracks or no more production building after this one. I mean, it's just a matter of time. As soon as Mr. Smog knows or sees this um, barracks from Major of X, he will be able to take it down. And the game is gonna be over. There are no pikemen. That's gonna be nice now. Beautiful trample is incoming. Nice one. Guardians are very tanky units. So they're not gonna get one-shotted, even though they were using the aggressive stance. They can always use the charge attack. Rallying call is gonna be used on them to make them tanky. And also you making sure to switch to the whole ground stance. Hill is coming in clutch. And they are now back to full HP. Okay, there is another barracks at the bottom side now. That's one of the few things I don't like about Battle for Middle-earth 2 slash Rise of the Witch King, you know? 
Because even in competitive games like this, you can actually play like Tom and Jerry with your opening, you know what I'm saying? Like you can hide one of your builders and build like barracks in very weird spots, making it like a nightmare for your opponent to actually finish off the game. <laughs> and that's not gonna happen in Battle for Middle Earth 1. In Battle for Middle Earth 1, there are bases or outposts. Once you kill them, the game is over, you know? Okay? I mean, he is fighting until the end. He was there was a nice uh slam shot by the way. Varax here is gonna be potentially taken down next. 13 power points collected after the Hobbit allies. Uh, Machine of X now playing without the fortress for a long time. He would have around 14 power points collected, which could be invested into something nice, for example. But he won't be able to use any of these power points, but also any of these power points un until he has the fortress back on the field, which is potentially not going to happen in this game. Because he has only 350 command points, and he will have to make more and more units 24-7. So all the money he's getting from the farms has to be invested once again into more army. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, he was using Barrage, by the way, <clears throat> to kill the barracks. <laughs> but there is one more around this side. I wish I had Fortress, yeah. Obviously you wish that. There is a level 5 Guardian unit on the field, guys. Level 5 is the maximum amount of levels you can actually have for a normal unit in Rise of the Witch King. They have also level 5 Spearman units. Slamshot is being used to kill one unit only. He was not even able to kill the banner carrier upgrade or banner carrier unit from the battalion, unfortunately. I mean, the game isn't over yet, but it's gonna be over now. I think that's the last barracks, right? Yeah, that's the last barracks, if I'm not mistaken. If the barracks is down, Major of X is gonna get defeated. There we go. The game number four is over. The score is even once again, ladies and gentlemen. And the tiebreaker number two is gonna happen next. Beautiful. Let's get right into the game number five. The game number five, the tiebreaker number two is gonna happen now, guys. We are on the beautiful map, Aaron Lee Edit. Major of X against Mr. Smoke. A great series so far. And we have at least two more games to go. And the matchup is gonna be Dwarves against Engma this time. Dwarves for Major of X and Engma for Mr. Smug. Is this the final? This is the final of the loser's bracket. The winner of this finals is gonna move to the grand finals uh, against Fairy guys in the best of nine. We have a mill into the Hall of Warriors start from the Engma player Mr. Smug at the bottom side. The red Dwarven player is building up two uh, mineshafts first. I mean, I like this matchup for May Shadow Facts because small maps are gonna be nice for dwarves, unlike for the goblins, in my opinion. Just because you have a crazy amount of all out power with the dwarves, you know? And when you go for an attack with like two guardians and one pikeman and rallying call, it's gonna be very hard to defend for Mr. Smog. However, I feel like dwarves, they have to snowball early on. Capridi and my friend, thank you so much for nine months and welcome back. just resubscribed for nine months. Ahoy. What is the patch that is being played now? What happened? We fight. We have some technical difficulties once again. Okay guys, after technical difficulties we are back with the game number five. Random Mirror, it is going to be. Uh, we're not gonna go with the same matchup like we had before the remake. Uh, hopefully we're gonna see a better matchup now. Random Mirror on the map, Erin Lee edits, and Dwarves against Goblins this time. Okay, I mean this matchup is <clears throat> very mobile matchup, but I feel like this is a really bad map for the Goblin faction, guys. This is a really, really bad map because it's very, very small. At the top side of the map, we have the blue Goblin player, Mr. Smog, against the red Dwarven player, Me Shadow Fax, at the bottom side. Who's building up two mineshafts first. And they have two tunnels coming up for the Goblin player. So the way the matchup works, in my opinion, is whoever manages to deal more damage with the first attack will be ahead and potentially even win the game. I don't expect this game to last very long, because normally these matchups on a map like Aaron Lee Edit are gonna be finished within the first 10 minutes. Um, I might be wrong, we might see some shenanigans, but we will see. I think Dwarven, Dwarven Faction should be having an advantage in this matchup, just because the map is very small. It's very, very easy to keep your mineshafts protected as dwarves. 
and you have a really crazy all-out potential with the Dwarven army. Guardians, pikemen, very, very strong. In order to kill one guardian, you will have to make like four goblin warriors, you know. So it's gonna become easier later on, but the first attack has to be defended from Mr. Smog very nicely. Otherwise, he's gonna fall behind and it's gonna be nearly impossible. Once you are behind against dwarves, you have pretty much no more chance in my book. But Spider Pit Start might do some work. We have two tunnels into the Spider Pits, into the Spider Links. Uh, no, it's not the same matchup. That's the Goblin Builder and not Engma Builder. Now Mr. Smog knows that he's facing against dwarves, but I think Shadow Fax is assuming that he's actually facing against Engma, which is not being the case. Spider Links are joining the battlefield first. Quite mobile units, very good for harassment. They will lose every 1v1 situation against any unit from the Dwarven player, by the way. I like this a lot. Smog is gonna go for the creep, which is nice. You don't only get money, you also get level 2, <clears throat> which is a huge power spike for the evil units. Just because they have no sustain with level 1, because they can't also go for a well like Man of the West can, Elf can, Dwarf can, you know? So we have Guardians coming up first, uh, moving to the middle, through the middle, for a potential attack. The first Goblin Keef is coming up now for the Goblin player, Mr. Smog. Uh, creep is gonna be done very fast. They are dealing actually a lot of damage. They are just not being tanky, you know? They are like glass cannons. Uh, what I would love to see from Mr. Smog is group them 2 by 2 Unless you're gonna go for a war chant. Because when you have two of them under your control for an attack, you can actually make sure to demolish the enemy resource buildings in like seconds. Oh, he's maybe hoping that Smog is not paying attention, but he does. Rallying Call was used off screen. It means Smog doesn't see them like we do. With the, with the glow, you know? He doesn't see the animation of the Rallying Call on these units. Which is a nice way, by the way. You can always use that off-screen. This way your opponent doesn't get to see your buff. And they don't expect the damage or the armor of the units. <clears throat> okay, it's a 2 versus 1 situation. Level 2 units here. The Ravel is not gonna be taken down just yet. And the Warchan was also used from Smoky. Yet he will be losing... Oh, that was very close. The Ravel was almost saved. He was able to take down the one tunnel, <clears throat> and he was also forcing his opponent to use the Warchan defensively. Which is nice, I guess. If one, we have more Spiderlings coming for harassment, this mindjob is gonna be taken down next, potentially. I mean, he will be trying to defend, but look at the damage they are actually dealing. That's why I like the Spiderlings so much more than the Wolf Packs or than the War Packs from the Isengard faction. Because I feel like they have so much more DPS than the other units. They might hit level 2 here, by the way. Yeah, they will hit level 2. And Smog now has to... Maybe can disengage. Oh, actually, he's winning the fight. <clears throat> that was not expected from my side. Okay, we have some pikemen now as a counter unit. And Urbi, my man, welcome to the stream, by the way. <laughs> Links are doing a lot of work here. For Mr. Smog. He's creeping the work lane at the top left side. Um, double goblin, goblin cave now. And with the spider links, he was achieving so much already, guys. Like, he was creeping, he was taking down a lot of guardians, he was taking down a mineshaft here. And beautiful. I mean, he's, he's buying us a lot of time for him. Expanding, getting money from the creeps. Also, this mineshaft is gonna be taken down next. Look their damage once they are able to attack all of them. They're gonna burst this down in a second. Okay. Pikemen and Guardians are moving forward. The thing is that Shadow of X is going for double barracks very early, you know? And he won't be able to keep with the spam, keep up with the spam of the of the goblin player. And I don't like the first attack from me, Shadow of X as well. Like, you know, going for an attack with only one guardian is not gonna achieve you too much. I would love to see him getting for an attack, or going for an attack with like three, four unit battalions of units. That was a bad creep, by the way, from Mr. Smog. <laughs> He's not gonna be able to get the money or the or the last it on the lair. Uh, very well done here from <laughs> Major of X, stealing the money just like that. Beautiful. <laughs> he has four power points collected, by the way, the blue goblin player, Mr. Smog. You have three power points collected for Major of X. Rallying Call is available. War Chan is on cooldown. You have some spider links recovering over time. That's just too much, you know. There, is a lot, there are a lot of units around from, from Mr. Smog. And there is no way the goblin player can win this game. Uh, can win this fight, I mean. He's gonna go for the trolley at the bottom right side. The mineshaft is gonna be taken down once again. 
I like the micro uh, here from Mr. Smog. He's doing a great job by harassing over and over again those mineshafts. He's going for the Forge Forks now uh, for Battle Wagons. Battle Wagons, by the way, are really vulnerable and weak against Spiderlings, guys. Spiderlings are going to one-shot your Battle Wagon in a second. I mean, that's like an overkill in my opinion. Like, you can't afford that, right? We have double Hall of Warriors and a Forge Works coming up now. What, with 450 Command Points, every Mineshaft beside this one is not going to hit level 2 any soon. Like, your resources have, won't have to sustain to actually keep it going like this. He's going to get some money from the creep, which is nice. He has to make more pipemen in order to be safe against the, against the Spiderling spam. Spiderlings were definitely the MVP of this game so far from Mr. Smug. Getting more units. He has a lot of units inside the mineshaft. We have cave beds being used for defense to debuff the enemy units, but they are not needed anymore, so he's going to be using that now for scouting. Okay, another tunnel will be potentially taken down, but now we have also half troll swordmen coming from the Fissure level 1, guys. Okay, Warchan is going to be used defensively, but that's fine, because you can always use the tunnels and go for the attack. There is a, there is a tunnel around this side. The mineshaft here is going to be taken down next. After all, Swartman are very, very strong units. They are my most favorite Swartman in the game. With the charge attack, they are similar to the Guardians, but I feel like they are stronger than the Guardians. Especially against Cav units like Battle Wagons can, for example, trample them down. The first Battle Wagon is now on the field. And Cave Pets are going to be on cooldown for a long time. I mean, with the Banner upgrade, you will have a lot of potential. And Rallying Call is going to be up on the field sooner, I mean, available sooner, than the War Chant from Mr. Smog. That means if you can use the timing with the rallying call and the double buff from the battle wagon, you can actually achieve too much because cave pads, but also warchan are gonna be on cooldown by the time. Okay, uh, it's a bad fight to take. You need to be careful with the battle wagon in a situation like this because if the spiderlings are gonna be able to hit you one time, you're gonna die. Like watch this, guys. Old ground stance is a terrible choice, by the way, in a situation like this because you can't move. Battle wagon is down. As easy as that. That's a lot of money gone just like that, guys. Like, a battle wagon costs 500 resources, and not even talking about the upgrade, you have to pay again for the battle wagon. And for the banner carry upgrade, I mean. I mean, yeah. I think the goblin player Mr. Smoke is in a great spot. And he has such a great lead. He's even gonna go for some uh, battle expansions to increase his command points. There's always something you can do with the goblin faction. Every single one of them is going to increase your command points by 75, which is very nice. Uh, you can only get this much command points from a level 2 tunnel. Spiderlings are doing a great work since the beginning of the game. They are also like the Alvin units being able to get stealthed around the trees. There's no battle wagons left on the field, by the way. He's going to go for the creep at the top left side with the pikemen. And there are just too many units to deal with for Major of X. Like, Smog has a lot of units, like Goblin Archers, Goblin Warriors, but also Hothral Swordsman for defense. And he's mainly using his Spiderlings for offense. And he's able to achieve a lot. Like, he's able to kill so many mineshafts over and over again. And he's always microing around, making sure to save the Spiderlings before they die. As long as you save one of them, as long, you know, when they are level 2 or higher, they will regenerate over time anyway. You can always put them around the trees. On this map, we have a lot of trees, actually. You can put them, for example, in a situation like this, in a spot like this. They will heal up over time. Battle Wagon is there on the field. It's almost down, by the way. Very, very low, so he might be forced to go for the heal. But now we might see a play. However, there is a massive Goblin Army is coming, guys. Massive! Like half Troll Swordsman, Goblin Archers, Goblin Warriors. This is gonna be devastating. Now we might see a base trade situation in which they're gonna try to deal damage to each other. The cave pets are going to be used for defense. They're going to be able to nullify the leadership of the battle wagon's banner carrier. Rallying call is going to be used immediately. Warchan is going to be used as well. So the goblin army is technically strong in a situation like this. The battle wagon is dying to the spiderlings and yes, spiderlings are doing a great job. The hobbits are doing a great job as well, by the way. They will be able to clean up this army, but the main army from the goblin players are on this side. The good thing for Major of X is that the goblin player Mr. Smog does not have a buff available for these units, but hear me out. 
I take it back, he has Tainted Land. Tainted Land is gonna give you the same stats like the Vorchan does, and you can use it right there. And that's gonna be also the case, guys. It's a massive army, the level 2. Mineshaft is going down first. The power points are rising. Wildman of Sunland, just why not? He's gonna use them also offensively instead of defensively against his hobbits. He doesn't need that because the hobbits are gonna be gone very soon. And they won't be able to deal the economical damage a major effects is looking for. Oil bottles are gonna be used for defense. They're gonna deal damage over time, so Mr. Smog has to react. Don't stay on the fire like this. It's a terrible, terrible choice. Actually, he's losing a lot to this fire on the ground, guys. Holy quacamole. No counter units against his battle wagons. No spiderlings around this area at all. After all, Swordsmen are great against them because, again, they can't get trampled down. But the oil bottles were actually doing a great work from Mage of X. Yeah, uh, he will still be able to kill at least one Hall of Warriors, I'm assuming. Because after all, Swordsmen are very strong units. And even though Hall of Warriors has 4000 HP, it is just not enough. He has Man of Steel now on them with one of them. He's gonna go for the heal to heal up those battle wagons. Uh, Man of Steel, they're gonna need ages to kill these half Thrall Swordsmen, especially with tall crown stands and when they are staying on the Tainted Land like this. We have some small fights going on, but the map is looking mainly blue to me. We have indeed 750 command points collected for Mr. Smog with only one Barrow expansion, which is impressive. On the other side, we have 325 command points collected for me, Shadow Vex only. So Smog is, has double the command points collected than his opponent. He's gonna go for the rebuild. It's gonna be used to save the last remaining level 2 mineshaft. But he has to react fast. He has to deal with the spider links before they're gonna be able to take it down anyway. And yeah, um, Smog has a great advantage now. He can always maintain the pressure. Go for more half troll swordsmen. At this point of the game, I would just skip making Goblin Warriors because you want to have some elite fighters on the field now if you can. But he has got killed the Goblin King now. A hero I would love to see more often. He has a double buff leadership uh, with the Skull Totem and the leadership with level 4. He's a great sportive hero just like the King Dane from the Dwarven faction. Uh, the Mineshaft has been taken down regardless, by the way, from the After All Swordsman. That means Rebuild was just delaying that. Uh, 300 command points only for Major of X. It's not enough to compete with a goblin player who has 850 command points collected. If that's available, Warchan available. If only three battle wagons on the field, they are running for their lives against the spiderlings, guys. Dancing around the Rosie, dancing around the fortress. Is this gonna be enough to save them? I mean, they are dying very fast to the fortress, though. Because they are very vulnerable against archers, if you don't know. You can go for a trample now in a, in a you know, situation like this. Beautiful. Uh, but don't get overconfident there with your battle wagons. Spider allies are gonna be <laughs> summons now. And I think after this one, Mishiro Fax will have fear against spiders, guys. I mean, spiders are everywhere in this matchup. And Smok is just performing so nice. It's actually so nice to watch him. Spider links were definitely the highest win condition in this matchup. In, in this game against Mishiro Fax. They were doing a great job from the beginning of the game, so it is absolutely worth it to start with the spider links if you are able to achieve it as much as Mr. Smog did in this game against Major of X. And you can see the series is back and forth guys. The first game was won by Mr. Smog. Then, you know, Major of X was able to win two games in a row, having his first lead in this best of seven series with 2-1 against Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog was able to make the score even once again in the previous game. Now it looks like he's gonna have actually his lead back by increasing, by you know, after by winning the game number five, making the score three two in his favor, and being only one win away from getting to the grand finals against Fairy. So you know, if Major of X loses this one, uh, he will be or oh, the damage is crazy actually. Look at the damage man against the battle wagons. That's a lot. Orkill is around this side doing actually not much. Nice camouflage, by the way. I couldn't even see him almost. So small guy is this guy. And yeah, if Major of X loses that, he will be forced to win two games in a row, which is easier said than done. Um, that I think you know, winning this game for any player is gonna give you a huge confidence also for the for the next coming game, because you will be in a safe spot. Regardless what's gonna happen, you won't be losing the series. But if he loses, if anyone loses that, uh, you know, the, the next game can be deciding. Alright.
Battle Wagons are doing a great work, but you know, in a situation like this, it's they are not very useful. Especially because they can't trample down the enemy after all swordsmen. Pikemen are dying very fast. Lucky you, thank you so much for the following. Welcome. We fight. Orbital Ice is gonna be available soon for me. Shadow Facts, he has rebuild available for the worst case scenario to keep one of his um, buildings safe. The problem is Mage of X has only one level 1 mineshaft on the field, guys. Unlike uh, the Goblin player, who has a level 3 tunnel right there. Level 3 tunnel right there. This one is also all about it, level 2. So he's getting a lot of money. He's now going for the Armory as well, for the Banner Carry upgrade. Which, by the way, is a huge power spike for the half Swordsman. Swordsman. Getting them from level 1 to level 2. He's gonna unlock the charge attack. Hobbit Allies will be summoned defensively. Rebuild is being used on this level 1 mineshaft. Which, by the way, I don't like to see that. It's a level 1 mineshaft after all, and I think at this point of the game, you need to kind of expect an attack on your fortress, you know? Now, Mr. Smog was able to see the war uh, to see the animation of the rebuild on this mineshaft. He knows that rebuild is going to be on a long cooldown. So if he can purchase the forge plate and heavy armor on his, on his half-troll swordsman, he can easily commit on this fortress. Look at the army of the Haftral Swordsman, guys. That looks dope. They are running over the hobbits. <laughs> you can use Phil of Galadriel, maybe. That's nice to scare the enemy units away. To buy some some, some time for you. He's gonna use Haftral um, Rallying Call on his hobbits. They're actually dealing a lot of damage. But is this gonna be enough? I don't think so. The Battle Wagons, two of them are remaining with the Man of Deal upgrade. They're gonna deal damage over time. But the thing is, he has to react to this, guys. Uh, Banner carry upgrade purchased. After all, Swordsman, Waldman of Dunlan, Warchan, and Tainted Land. With Gorkil, the Goblin King being around, Gorkil has no leadership just yet. He has to get level 4 first. Undermine! Ooh! Undermine has a crazy animation, but they are just too powerful at this point. They don't take too much damage, guys. They are just getting knocked back or knocked up, but that's not gonna do much for you. They are still quite healthy, and there are so many of them. Like, so many of them. What can you do against such a reckless seed? Where is, uh, where is the Goblin King? He's so small, it's very hard for me to find him, actually, inside. There he is. He needs still one level, but the commitment against the Fortress, and remember, Rebuild was used before, so it can't be used to save the Fortress, guys. Yeah, he can also go for the Forge Blades, but he didn't go for it. He's gonna go for the level 3 first, for the Scavenge Armor. And I think that's not going to be even necessary. Uh, the oil barrels are going to you know, deal damage over time, but there are just too many units to deal with. And the fortress is gone just like that. Major of X will be defeated, and the score after the game number 5 will be 3-2 for Mr. Smug. What a beautiful performance with the Spider Links. What a beautiful performance with the Goblin Faction. Game 5, final. Alright, so let's get the game number 6 started. The game number 6, another random mirror is gonna be the matchup. This time on the map, Etam Mars Edit is all about to begin, guys. Um, the score is 3 2 for Major of. for Mr. Smock, not for Major of X, sorry. And the matchup is gonna be Goblins against Man of the West. And this time, Major of X on the Goblin faction and Smock is on the Man of the West faction. Remember, in the previous game, Mr. Smock was playing the Goblins and Major of X was playing the Dwarven faction. So let's see, the Man of the West performance. From Mr. Smog on the map at a Mars edit. At the left side of the map, we have the red goblin player Major of X against the blue Man of the West player Mr. Smog at the right side. Building up a farm into the early barracks once again. On the other side, we are we are having a two tunnel start from Mr. from Mr. Major of X. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, again, we have seen Mr. Smog one time as the Man of the West against. Major of X, it was Man of the West against, uh, against, uh, it was not against Goblins, I think it was against Isengard, right? If I'm not mistaken. No, against Dwarves. What was the matchup again, guys, guys, from the last, uh, from the second game in the, in the series yesterday? It was a nice matchup, uh, which was going really, uh, it was Dwarves against Man of the West, yeah, I remember. It was a nice performance from both the players, and Mr. Smog was not able to win. But now he's not against dwarves, he's against goblins. It's best of seven? Yes, it's best of seven, guys. Two tunnels into the spider pit. 
So that might be possibly the last game if Smok is winning that, or is gonna win this one. He's gonna move to the finals against Fairy, and Major of X will have to win two games in a row. Warchan is available for Major and Rallying Call is available for Mr. Smok. Okay, so we're gonna have a Gondor Soldier start actually for our offensive attack. Remember, in a 1v1 situation, the soldiers of Gondor are gonna dominate the fight against goblins. They can even win against them in a 2 vs 1 situation. However, they will be forced to deal with the Spiderlings first. Spiderlings, they should not be able to win the 1v1 fight, but they can stall a lot of time. They can buy a lot of time and wait for the next units to arrive. He can't give it up like this. He has to fight for this uh, tunnel. Warchant is available, will be used immediately. Rallying Call was used as well. The soldiers are taking a lot of damage, but they are also dealing a lot of damage in return. I think the soldiers are gonna lose this fight. The Spiderlings are actually so strong, I was not expecting them to deal that much damage. That's actually crazy, guys. Holy Quacamole, they're gonna even hit level 2 in this situation, I guess. Nice defense here, after all. Yeah, the Spiderlings are dominating this fight. Beautiful. At this point, I think it's better to go for the creep. To go for the Goblin Lair creep, potentially, at the top left side. Just to make sure that these units are gonna hit level 2. They're gonna hit level 2 now, anyway. Nice. Kill back, wait for the second unit. Make sure to use hold ground stands to, you know, reduce the damage income from the opening units. He's gonna, he's gonna be in a safe spot. Nice defense. Very well done here from uh, Major of X. In the meantime, Smok is gonna go for the troll layer with two pikemen. Pikemen are also a great counter unit to the spiderlings. Uh, level 2 is gonna heal up over time. We have now some goblins uh, from two goblin caves from Major of X. The creep is gonna be uncontested. You can also go for the white creep just like this, you know, as he's going back, look at this. You see, you burst him down. That was a smart move here from Major of X. You lure the white away from the lair, and as he's going back, you can one-shot him. He won't turn and fight you back, you know? Because if you try to fight him in a normal way, he's gonna have a lot of sustain. You know, every time it looks like he's, you, got, <laughs> you are all about to kill him, he hits you one time and he's gonna heal up to full HP, you know? Okay, creep secured by the... Then off the West player Mr. Smog, but in this situation also by the Goblin player Mei Shadow Fax. Uh, he might also capture this one if he wants to. To get some extra units from the inn, just why not. Nice defense here against the Goblin Warriors. We have, you know, more tunnels coming up for the Goblin player, obviously. 350 command points only, but command points are not a problem. Like mentioned in the game before, you can always go for the Barrow expansions and get more command points for free. I mean, not for free, they cost 200 each, but... It, it's very cost efficient if you think about it. Like you get 75 command points for 200 resources. It's absolutely fine. Um, ranges are gonna be nice for Mr. Smog definitely to deal with the spider links, but also against the goblin spam. Um, and I think eventually, yeah, there we go. That's what I, what I wanted to say. We will have to get a fissure on the field for the goblin player make sure of X just to be able to recruit some half troll swordsmen. Half troll swordsmen are gonna be very much needed against archers and rangers. Nice harassment, beautiful, he has to be careful, he's watching over his units, that's what I like to see. But he's not being able to attack nicely, like a lot of units are not doing too much. He's gonna be still able to take down the farm, but he's losing a lot of units also to the archers. Again, spiderlings are very weak against archers, guys. There are some pikemen, it looks like Major of X is not paying attention. He was almost losing the builder, for no reason. He might lose this tunnel. Uh, Smok is this time not paying attention, running into the range of the fortress. This attack should be hurting, this tunnel is gonna be taken down. Now we are getting some Corsars of Umbar on the field from the inn. They, have, uh, they are from Mordo, the units you can recruit from the level 2 Haradrim Palace. Like a, like a semi-ranged uh, units with the firebombs, it's gonna deal damage over time on the ground, so it's nice actually to have them. They are also very effective against buildings. In a situation like this, it's better to use them. In the, mil in the in the range form with the firebombs. He will be able to defend himself. But the tunnel has been taken down anyway. So it's nice from the Man of the West player Mr. Smok. He's also getting a lot of time. Now we're gonna get some ranges on the field. Which is gonna make the fights even more in favor of Mr. Smok. The Man of the West player. The good thing here for the Goblin player was that he was getting away without using his own war chant. He will have a buff advantage now. Which by the way is huge in Rise of the Witch King. But he will have to deal with rangers, which is very, very hard. 
Okay, one Barax, one Archer range, that's all we got for the Man of the West player. The Spiderlings, they need to be used over and over again like Mr. Smog did in the previous game to go for harassment, to take down as many farms as you possibly can and try to keep your opponent busy. Don't fight like this. We're gonna lose the fight in a second. He's giving up too many power points for no reason. If a fight around this side as well. Almost all the creeps beside the troll creep here and the white creep here are still remaining on the field. No, actually not. This one also got creeped. I don't even know who was able to creep this one. Goblin creeps are remaining and the troll creep around this side is also remaining on the field. On the map, Etam Mars edit. Oh, look at the damage they are actually able to deal. Yeah, but I think they won't be able to finish this, right? It deals damage over time. The building is burning over time. So he has to reposition. Charge attack is being used. Very well done here. He's gonna put now water. Yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. You can always get rid out of fire like this. But it's still burning, I guess. Yeah, it's gonna still dam take damage over time, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, and he was able to save the building without using the rebuild, which is, by the way, available. So he could have used it anyway, but it was just not necessary, guys. Okay, he's gonna use rebuild on this farm to keep it alive. It's almost level 2. And now we have some Gondor Knights coming on the field as well from the stable. Uh, 7 power points almost collected for Major Ofex after the Cave Bats and War Chant. He was not even using War Chant for this attack, by the way. He will have to deal with Rangers. One of them is level 2. That means Longshot is available. He was using it before. But it's gonna be available soon again. Uh, Half Troll Swordsmen are surprisingly great against the Gondor Knights because they are the only Swordsmen in the game that can't get trampled down. Cave Bats are gonna be ready very soon. Rallying Call is gonna be ready very soon as well. Um, yeah, we might see some half-troll pikemen later on as well, um, just to have some, you know, tank units inside your army because you can always use the porcupine formation with these units, and this way you can kind of be protected, be you know, kind of protect yourself against a potential trample against your, you know, goblin warriors or against your um, horsars of Umbar. You might recruit more of these units from this one because also 300 each, so they are not very cheap. Oh, Smoke is not paying attention. He might lose his farm for no reason, guys. And he will be able to save this one, I guess. The Spiderlings are not as productive, <clears throat> as, uh, Im as impactful as I would like to see them. Because they could always go around this area and take down this farm, for example, you know. But they are not doing much since like a couple of minutes now. And the Man of the West play is able to hold himself, like to defend himself, to keep his farms protected, which is very nice. Uh, spider Pits level 2 now, by the way, for the Spider Riders. That's what I like to see. I like this. That's gonna force the Man of the West player to make multiple pikemen to keep the rangers protected. One pikeman all, al all alone is not gonna be able to do much. Spider, links can uh, spider Riders can always use the bow. It's a bad fight to take here yeah, for the Man of the West player. I don't know about that. He's gonna take a lot of damage. You should always use the poison arrows to maximize your DPS. He's gonna lose a lot of these units, by the way. He might lose the entire battalion, but he's not using the poison blades for no poison arrows for no reason. Um, and they will be able to get away. There's a well, so it's fine. I mean, as long as you can save one unit as the good faction, in this case, the Man of the West, you should be fine. Because you are trading sustain against no sustain, you know? Okay, 5 power points after rebuild and rallying call. We have 10 power points for Major Ofax after Cave Pads and Warchan. That means he can basically go for either the Spider Allies or the Wildman of Dunland. What I would love to see more are Wildman of Dunland. It sounds crazy, but you can use them on top of the enemy archers and, you know, kind of win the fight. And I think that's gonna be also needed. Oh, oh. okay. Doesn't do much. Doesn't do much against, against Cav. Wildman of Thunland, that's what I'm trying to say. There are no Gondor Knights around. That's gonna be a nice fight. Long shots were used, so it's not available. He's gonna use another long shot on this on this uh, Spider Riders, but they are not taking too much damage from the Arrow Volley. However, for the Wildman of Thunland, it was not available. Uh, the War Chant was not available. It was not even necessary. The fight will be dominated by the Isengard, um, by the Goblin player, not Isengard player. But the thing is, he needs to be more offense, you know, more harassing now at this point he's very passive and he keeps losing tunnels without being able to take down anything down from mr smog theogen is a great choice here by the way 
He gives leadership and utility with level one to every unit. Beside, you know, unlike Eomir, who is who is only giving that powers to your Gonda Knights or Rohirrim. Uh, now he has to be more aggressive. Use the Wildman cooldown. They are still remaining on the field for a couple of seconds. Um, with the Pillage ability, you can always steal money from the open and from the open uh, structures as well. He will be able to defend to defend himself, no big deal. Cave pads are on cooldown, guys, so the leadership can't get negated. Nice tainted land here from the Goblin player. Rebuild is gonna be used to save the barracks, but I think there are just too many units. However, the white men are gonna be gone soon. The Gondor Knights are going for a trample. Long shots are coming in clutch, though, and I think that might be enough. He can go for a trample. There are no pikemen around this rangers. I don't know why he's so scared. But the barracks is gonna be protected. Very nice. Very close. I mean... Rebuilds on cooldown now, that means with the next attack, the goblin player Major Ofex can actually finish off this barracks, no big deal. Uh, we have Gorkil the Goblin King and I love to see that. He has 3 uh, Barrow expansions, you know, that means 75, 150, 225 extra command points. That's why he has 750 command points against 575 from Mr. Smug. But he has a big advantage or big lead in terms of power points, definitely. Um, Actually, they are not dealing as much damage as I was expecting them to deal because, you know, Theodim was around giving leadership and that means not only damage but also armor to the allied units. Beautiful trample there. Nice one. Almost killed the entire battalion and the battalion is going to be gone. The level 2 farm is going to be down next and the rebuild is on cooldown still. Like, that's going to be a nice attack. He might even be able to finish off this archer range or the barracks at least in the backside. Again, the half troll swatmen are doing so nice against the uh, against the uh, Gondor Knights. Cave pads are gonna negate the leadership from Theodin guys. Orkill was able to get away. He is now level two. Has Skull Totem available. Skull Totem is pretty much like a tainted land, but it doesn't only give you buff, also gives you fear resistant. Okay, uh, Theodin is Uchi. I think he's fine. Spider allies are gonna be used as well deal as much damage as possible. I think the stable is gonna go down. The spider allies uh, from the summon of the goblin faction are doing a lot of damage against buildings. <laughs> and I think, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna see a game number 7 in the best of 7 series. Because I don't see a coming back from this situation for Mr. Smoke anymore. He's losing a lot. He has not many units remaining on the field anymore. The barracks is very low. I think there are so many buildings still remaining on the field, but almost every single one of them beside the stable are very low. Like, he can lose the barracks in a second, for example, right? The build is still on cooldown. He can also lose the archer range in a second. If Boromir now joining the battlefield, Boromir's Horn of Gonzo gets in completely negated, by the way, from the skull totem of the Goblin King Gorkil. Like, that's a nice hero to counter the fear effect of the Horn of Gonzo. You just need to make sure to use the Skull Totem and to fight around your Skull Totem. Your Skull Totem, however, can get killed or destroyed from the Man of the West player. Go for a trample. There are not many pikemen remaining on the field anymore. Don't be shy. There we go, level 3 unlocked. One level away from getting the glorious, uh, not glorious charge, but it's the leadership unlocked. One of Gondo to stun the enemy units because Skull Totem was not being used. Uh, Gorkil might be in a bad spot here, but I think he should be able to get away. Theodin is not dealing too much damage. He will need ages to kill this Gorkil, the Goblin King. He can also get mounted. Unlike Theodin, this guy has a scorpion, guys, to ride on. Okay. Uh, BTG, the King, thank you so much for the follow and welcome. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Nice trample once again. Major of X is doing such a great job, by the way, in this game with the goblins. He's also level 4 now. The guard kills the Goblin King. Leadership is unlocked. Tom Bombadil is gonna be summoned for defense. That's gonna buy some time, but with Tom Bombadil, you can always get away. Like, goblin units or goblin faction generally is known for their mobility part, right? Every goblin unit, goblin warriors, obviously, spider link, spider riders, goblin king, guard kill is always so fast that Tom Bombadil is not gonna be able to catch them. So once you see Tom Bombadil, just run away from him, wait until he's gone, and you can turn back. Look how many units he has. Like, that's waves and waves of goblins, guys. Yodin is trying to achieve something. He's still three levels away from the Glorious Judge. What would be the most satisfying thing to see here is imagine if he gets level 6, uses Glorious Judge, and tramples down all these goblins, you know, beautifully, 
and one shots every single one of them. That would be the dream, however, he is still three levels away from unlocking the glorious charge. That's a lot of levels he needs to, you know, be done first. With. Where is Boromir when we need him? I don't see Boromir on the field anymore, maybe he's dead, I can't tell you guys. Now I think he has enough units to commit against the fortress. Make sure to use the Skull Totem. Now this champion, I mean this hero all alone is gonna offer you alone double buff, guys. And that's why I don't understand why we don't see him more and more often. Yeah, he is not very cheap in compared to Azok, but the utility he offers you is actually insane. Peer resistance, buff, leadership, it's a lot. No? And ladies and gentlemen, the game is over, the score is even once again. Now we're gonna see the final game in the best of 7 series, the game number 7 between Mr. Smog against Mei Shadow Fax will happen next. The last game, the game number 7 is gonna happen now, on the beautiful map Westfold, it's gonna be another random mirror. The deciding match, which is gonna determine who is gonna move to the grand finals and who has to say goodbye to the tournament guys, let's get it started. We are waiting for Major of X to hit that ready and we're gonna jump right into the game. Let's go. Alrighty. So let's hope that we're gonna see a great matchup, not a very unbalanced matchup. Uh, I hope that we're gonna see an even matchup, which can be fun and I hope not any one of them is gonna lose because of the matchup. Okay, Goblins against Engma. On the map Westfold, I think that's gonna be a tough one for the Engma faction, we shall see. At the left side of the map we have the blue Goblin player Mr. Smog, at the right side we have the red Engma player May Shadow Fax. It's the map Westfold, which means it's a favorable matchup, uh, favorable map for the Goblin faction, it's a big map. Alongside with the jungles of Farharad, you can expand in the side lanes, you can attack from multiple angles. But the thing is, um, the Engma faction has a great scaling into the mid to late game. Once you get some money, once you get into the late game, you can recruit this, uh, um, you know, this rangers from the level three, level three all of the Kingsmen, the Dark Rangers. With the Felwin combination, you can actually win the fights, dominate the fights easily. And unlike the Horn of Gonzo from Boromir, which can get countered by Fear Resistant, the Felwind can't get countered, guys. So even Gorkil the Goblin King can't save you against Felwind Longshot combination. We have two tunnels into the spider pits and yeah, we see spider pits all the time now from the goblin faction just because how useful they are. Smog, I sell fortress, you give me $50 of your money. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna get both disqualified when you do that. <laughs> I mean, let's see. It's a very, very hard matchup for the Engma faction, I know that, but it is, it is not impossible, I would say. What, what can happen in this matchup is we might potentially see like two, three Hall of the Kingsmen in order to compete with the spam of the goblins. Um, and the goblin player is gonna definitely go for the goblin capes in this matchup. You wanna have goblins because they are quite, quite cost efficient, they are very mobile. You can use them for harassment and if you lose them you don't even give up too many power points or you don't lose too much resources, you know? The oldie is gonna scout, he, was, he will be able now to see the Trailmaster and the Engma faction. So Mr. Smog, but also the Engma player and Mishiro Fax, they both know the faction now. They both know the matchup now, what I'm trying to say. And we're gonna have an early uh, Troll and Wolf ten coming up for the Engma player. For the potential Wolf Riders or Wolf Packs. Wolf Packs, I think, are not gonna be great in this matchup because Wolf Packs are mainly being recruited to deal with the enemy pikemen. And I think the Goblin player is not gonna get any pikemen on the field any soon. So we're gonna see mainly Wolf Riders. And I don't know how they're gonna perform against the Spiderlings. I can't tell you guys. Oh, that's a nice snipe! Oh no, that's a bad start into the game from Major of X as he's losing a builder just like that very, very early. Pikeman starts. Uh, we're gonna have Kundabad Warriors moving forward. Warchan is also available for Major of X. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. Yes, so be careful with the Traumas in the backside. You wanna make sure to keep this white guy in the battalion alive. Very, very important, by the way. He might use the Warchan here, which is gonna give him the chance to fight against the Spiderlings. But it looks like he's getting away. What a weird situation is that, actually, that they are not able to attack the... What is that? They are not able to attack the Gundabad Warriors. What? What's going on? Finally, they are able to attack them. But I think running away in a situation like this is not an option, guys. 
You can't run away from them, so just turn and fight. There are some situations in which running away is not gonna be an option. There is no follow-up, there is no reinforcement coming. So it's just losing those Kondavat warriors for no reason. The mill has been taken down regardless, by the way. The spiderlings are trying to get away. I think they are as fast as the wolf pack, so they should be able to get away. As long as they keep running. It's gonna chase them down until the end of the world or until the end of the map Westworld. More spiderlings are gonna be used for harassment. This mill is gonna be taken down next if they focus buff at the same time. And yeah, losing the mills is gonna hurt you big time, especially when you have uh you know wolf wolf riders, wolf packs, you wanna you wanna you need to invest 200 for the trial master and 300 afterwards for the for the upgrade into the wolf riders, so that's a lot of money. Warden is gonna be used defensively, but the mill is gonna be taken down regardless. Which is really sad for the Angler player, Mei Shadow Fax. He will be able to kill all the spider links though, that's the bright side. Two battalions are gone, but again, you know, I don't think it's worth it. Because so far the goblin player is untouched. He didn't lose any single mill. Um Yeah, let's see. I mean Mei Shadow Fax, he's not gonna give up any soon. He's gonna fight until the very end. That's what I like about Mei Shadow Fax the most. He's a fighter. Not not a guy who is giving up. Uh, he was even fighting until the very end when he lost the fortress in the game number 5. Wolf packs against spiderlings, they are buffed, but they can still fight against the spiderlings. There are just too many of them alongside with the goblin warriors. Okay, they are complaining about legs now, but... Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a remake at this point, because the game is already going on for the, for the past 5 minutes. And going for a remake after 5 minutes feels kinda... Not a bad, not a best choice, you know? Nice rample <clears throat> with the Wolf Riders. Uh, they get slowed down. You want to make sure to not slow, to not get slowed down like this. You want to go for a flank damage. Go for a small trample instead of riding, you know, through the mid through the middle inside the enemy lines. He's going to potentially be able to creep the troll layer, which is going to give him a lot of money. But he's going to win this fight anyway. During all this time, the goblin player Mr. Smog was also able to creep the work layer at the bottom left side. Troll layer is going to give a lot of money to the Engmar player and he needs that. You will need to transition later on into the Dark Rangers, definitely, if you want to win the fight. Dark Rangers are going to be nice not only against the Goblin spam, but also against the spider Spiderlings. Spiderlings are very weak against Archers, guys. Okay, uh, let's see. I mean, the game isn't over yet, it's just too early to say that, but he has only 350 command points against 450 from Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog has the buff advantage, the Warchan is still on cooldown for Mei Shadow Fax. He's going to creep the work lane at the bottom right side as well. But the Engma player is creeping the top work layer, top left work layer, which is very nice. He will be able to take down one tunnel, I guess. No, he's not gonna be able to do that. Warchan is gonna be used defensively from Mr. Smog. The game is freezing from time to time, and you can see that as well, guys. But I don't know why. I can't tell you the reason. We have only one Hall of the Kingsman. I think we need more than that. We need like a second one for the Engma player just to be able to compete with the spam. Can you run away from the Spiderlings? That's the question. I think Wolf Riders are quite mobile units and they should be able to get away. So the Warchan from Mr. Smog won't achieve too much for him. He will be able to defend himself, but that's pretty much it. That's very good for Engma player. Oh, never mind. He's actually turning now to go for the attack with the Spiderlings and he will be able to at least kill these two mills at bare minimum, even maybe this one in the backside, which is all about to hit level 2. Ingma is finally creeping this one. Almost a level 4 pikeman battalion, by the way. He can also go for the work lane around this side. Uh, he won't be able to deal any economical damage because the units are very badly damaged and he will be forced to retreat. Okay, the mill here has been taken down. This one is going down next. The wallop is building up to save the builder. Oh, the felwind is being used on the spider links, but the follow up is gonna be a little bit too late. He's losing a lot of spider links for no reason. Mr. Smok is not paying enough attention. But he will be able to save the level 2, which is the main thing. The other one is also going to be able to get away. Galvin is very, very effective in every stage of the game. But the problem with the Engma player is that his command points kept after losing these two mills. On the other side, we have 700 command points collected for Mr. Smog, guys. Without any Barrow expansions around the Fortress. He's getting a lot of money and he has a lot of command points available. Nice trample on these goblin warriors, but half throws Fortman are here. Warchan is gonna be used defensively. Keith pets are flying around from the goblin player to debuff the enemy units. The half throws Fortman, they are unkillable in, unkillable in a situation like this. 
You can't deal with them. You have no extroverts on the field. You have no Gundabad warriors on the field. The wolf riders can't hurt them by trampling them down because they can't get trampled down. You wanna, you need to fight them in a melee fight. I mean, Engma player is still doing a great job defending, but the problem is he is falling apart in every side lane. Look at the spider links. They are being everywhere, harassing 24-7. That's what I like to see. The active in macro is as much important and even more important in my opinion than the micro in RTS games. Being able to, you know, you move many, many units at the same time and attack from multiple sides at the same time is the, is the key to victory, guys. Okay, 775 command points against 375 only. All of the Kingsman is still only level 1. He's gonna have to build more and more meals, but he loses the meals over and over again as well. This one in the backside is gonna give him 75, but it's very, very low already. I mean, as Engma, you can always go for the for the Snowbind, which can buy you some time to defend one of your selected structures, but every of these abilities are going to be a defensive choice, which are going to delay your 10, your 15, your 25 power point abilities from the Spellbook. Okay, after all, Swartman are dealing a lot of damage. One Pikeman is down. I mean, they are very expensive, but I think they are worth every single penny, guys. 400 each, but they are doing so much work for the Engma faction. For the Goblin faction, I mean, sorry. This tunnel is gonna be protected if he commits with the Haftral Swordman, and yeah, I think he's gonna do that potentially. He can also get out with the Goblin Warriors. The meal is going down, and the Engma player Major of X is falling apart. Again, it's a very difficult matchup for the Engma uh, faction in this map. You know, against goblins on the map Westfold. And I think Engma is also one of the one of the underplayed factions in the current patch, in the current meta. I think the meta is just, you know, seeing much more Mordor, Elves, Isengard, and also Goblins. But like, you know, Engmar and Men of the West are not doing very great, as well as Dwarves. In the current patch. 9 power points collected, 10 power points collected. Mr. Smog has now the chance to go for the Wildman of Dunland, and that's gonna be also his choice. Yes, War Chain ability available, and I think he's gonna use it now all together. There we go. He won't be able to commit against the Fortress just yet, especially against Engma, it's very risky because he can always go for the Snowbind, keep that in mind. But you can actually deal a lot of damage to the enemy buildings. Nice trample! Oh, no, actually not. He, want, he was not able to trample them down at all, but they are gonna be trampled down now. They are taking a lot of damage even through the Warchant. But look at the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen, guys. The map is all blue. And Mr. Smok is saying, Westfold is mine, get out of my map. That might be one of the fastest games in this series. Because how dominant Mr. Smok is with the goblins against the Engma from Main Shadow Facts. It's like a roulette, it's like a it's like a 50-50 situation, guys, when you pick random. And just for you to know, you don't have to pick random in this tournament. There is no rule that forces you to pick the random faction. You can play whatever faction you want to play with. Um but yeah, they were, they were all choosing the, the random faction. It could just be the other way around that Mr. Smog gets to play the Engma faction. Um, yeah, and that's gonna be it, guys. GG well played. And Smoky is moving now to the Grand Finals. And he will be facing against Fairy in the Grand Finals, guys. Game 7, Finals, loser bracket. Beautiful, GG well played.